Okay, I redid the tube geometry. Got a little wind and a little whistling wind and a leaky uh, window here. Sorry for the whistle. Um, what I got here is ball bearing circular groove to fit flange on underside of left caps. So what I'm referring to is this brown is the bronze tube that's sealed at both ends and ends on the underside of the left cap here there's a circular groove that goes all the way around the perimeter of the inside and then what I have are two and there's a ball bearing a circular array, uh, arrangement of ball bearings throughout that entire circumference of that circular groove groove um, because I've got two sets of discs and one is suspended from the outside of its disc by a barrel going down the inside of this bronze tube. And so the barrel is aluminum and the discs on the inside of it are aluminum and they got holes on the inside to accommodate a shaft that goes through them which supports smaller size discs that fit right inside the aluminum barrel. And so the barrel is open at this end, but it fits inside the groove of ball bearings, so that both and then it also and this barrel also has a a axle on this side, um, and then the inner axle of the inside uh, discs has an axle on that side, but it will probably have to have a ball bearing axle on the inside of this aluminum barrel on the right side. So the barrel spins one way, its set of discs and then the axle, the aluminum axle or bronze, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, may, uh, no aluminum. Let's make it aluminum with its set of discs that are inter in between the discs of the barrel. They spin the opposite way. And then we got air coming in here spinning one way and traveling down the outside of the aluminum, between the aluminum barrel and the brass tube, the outer encasing. And then and then the um, the air coming down or coming into the tube at this end spins the opposite way and travels through the holes and both both air so this one travels down the outside and then it starts creating turbulence down here because it's counter rotating to this air coming in here so I'm not sure about this consequence but the idea was to have you know the whole thing with stacked discs, each one alternating in opposite directions from the other one next to it. So that means the air now has to travel through these holes and make its way to the last inner disc and then down the inside of its shaft. And there's, so there's one exit down the inside of the shaft. So let's zoom in and show you this a little better. So the air comes in this side and rotates this is over and then under while this is over and then under but so that makes it the opposite way and so this is going to travel down the outside of the purple barrel in a circular fashion and then it comes down here creates turbulence because this air is going this way and both are going to mix and go through this hole and then widen out, go around the this inside disc, and then come back and go through another hole, in and out, in and out, until finally wraps around and goes down, down through a hole in this last inner disc, and then goes down the center of its axle and exits out through the left side of this bronze encasing. Now, let's see, let's go back a bit. Now the whole thing has uh, copper windings around it, which now means it's a singular winding around the entire thing, although it might be bifiler. So it could very well be bifiler winding. Right, that would make sense. Um, and so one of that, one of those two coils is um, going to have to be wired to the outside circuit opposite to the other wire winding. Um, to accommodate the fact that this is a DC situation and they're going in opposite directions um, 
So we want to make sure the circuit is oriented correctly in concert with the fact that these turbulent air masses are going in opposite directions, but more importantly the aluminum disks, every other disk is going opposite to its neighbor in circular direction. Now, I don't know how feasible this idea is. It might have to be modified a bit, um, considering the fact that I got the turbulence at one end down here. I would expect the turbulence would be better off in the middle. But the exit still has to be to one side, or to both sides, for that matter. Yeah, that's true. It could be both sides. So, um, we could have two barrels coming down from either side. No, we couldn't. Yeah, this air has to come in and enter the inside of the barrel, so the barrel has to be open at one end. So if this air came in the middle, we could have two barrels coming in from both ends, open at the middle, so this diagram has to be modified to be symmetrically balanced. So the air enters down the middle here for the inner disks. It enters, um, it could enter at both ends, for the outer barrel, and then it exits um, at both center axle points. So this has to be redone. At least this was a, an exercise in trying to imagine or <laughs> uh, visualize what I'm trying to accomplish in terms of airflow versus stacked disks along the entire length. <clears throat> Now, theoretically, you only need two disks, one going one way and one going the other way, but we want added power, so it's probably going to be a stacking of disks, except that every other disk has to rotate in opposite directions, and the whole thing is powered by compressed air flowing in a vortex shape. So all of that has to be taken into consideration, and that means the coil of wire around here is going to have to be bifiler and wired in the circuit one coil opposite to the other. The iron casing surrounding this is still an iron casing grounded to a mass of iron that's elsewhere away from this device, magnetically coupled to it by way of its iron connection. Um, so I would imagine the iron casing has to surround the coil snugly. Um, there's no need to have any space between the case encasement, the iron encasement, and the coil of wire. It's going to be a big coil of wire that's going to be tens of miles long, maybe a hundred miles long, or hundreds of miles long. It's going to be a big, long wire, but it's going to be narrow gauge because we want to emphasize voltage over current. And that's because, from what I've gleaned, uh, listening to uh, Byron Strom, S-T-R-O-H-M, -S kind of like Ohm's Law, Ohm, except with an S-T-R in the big front end, Strom, Brian Strom, with a Y, not an I, in his Brian, um, he was stating that one of the hazards of this, either unipolar or homopolar, and there's a difference between the two, um, disc, is that it's a DC unit only, there's no AC involved, but it tends to be low in voltage and high in current, which is not use, u useful for most practical purposes. So, Normally in an AC system, it's no problem. You have a transformer and you can monkey with the, with the uh, voltage versus the current. But in this situation, how do you alleviate the problem? And I think the, the way to do it is to have a thin wire, but very long. Because in a, an electromechanical water meter, there are two coils. But the current coil is not much of a coil. It's two turns of wire and it's very stout. While the voltage coil is a lot of turns, I don't know how many, let's say 900, I don't know, a few thousand, um, and it's very thin wire. And of course it's wired a certain way, you know, the voltage coil is wired in parallel to the AC um, circuit coming in and out of that electromechanical water hour meter, while the current is wired in series on one of the legs. Be that as it may, um, this could be similar. It might be wired in parallel, but a thin wire and very long. We know it's very long. That's what uh, William Line tells us. So I would surmise to go with that very long piece of wire that's making up a huge coil winding. 
I would suspect it's also very narrow gauge, very thin gauge, and wired in parallel to the circuit. Um, so we got to have diodes in very specific places in the circuit to make sure the flow of uh, current never goes backwards. Just like we have to have um, a one-way valve here to make sure it doesn't backflow into this device and also to back up the pressure to make sure not too much air comes out at one time. But we could have a valve there. Um, but the air coming in is compressed. So we have to regulate airflow and we have to regulate current flow and I think that's how to do it with the coil of wire winding around this, the copper winding. It should be a thin gauge, very long, and connected in um, in parallel to the load that comes off of that wire. Now whether or not we have any capacitors situated as well in the circuit, I'm not sure. I, I was considering that possibility but it um, may not be necessary, I don't know, or maybe to even out the flow coming out of here in case this varies in voltage levels then to smooth that out some capacitors might be uh, necessary or coils, some series coils to uh, even out you know it depends what we're evening out, the voltage versus the current, it depends what's varying too much so we would have to have appropriately gauged coils, you know, coils wound with appropriately gauged wire, connected appropriately either in parallel in the case of voltage modulation or in series in the case of amperage modulation to help kind of smooth out. You know, unless, you know, I'm just saying in very rudimentary terms, obviously my circuitry background is like practically zero. But knowing practically zero, that would be the simplistic approach I would take to even out or to modulate, uh, to, to, to even out um, current and voltage, if in case it should come out not smoothly from this device. I'm not sure why it would come out non-smoothly, um, but it might, I don't know. The large coil around this might even it out um, the voltage in all likelihood. So the only uh, concern might be for the current. Um, so they might just need one more coil hooked up in series on one leg of the circuit to even out the current. It would be a short piece of wire, very stout in all likelihood. Um, let's see, what else? I guess that's it. So I'm going to have to do another image of this and tack it onto this video. It took me a long time, a little tired, so I might wait a day before I redo this. But it's a good idea because I think... I didn't like the idea that the turbulence is all at one end. Um, and I'm not taking advantage of symmetry here. So I could have air exit at both ends, not just enter at both ends. Um, and I don't like the idea that the air entering here is immediately turbulent with the air entering here. Uh, no, excuse well, coming over from this side, it's mixing here at one end rather than in the middle. Um, yeah, well, you know, it, this might not be a bad design because we've got the barrel, instead of it uh, rooted at the center of this end plate, of the bronze end plate, it's rooted circularly, which means if there is any turbulence, this circular ball bearing arrangement is certainly going to handle turbulence a whole lot better than this axle ball bearing at this end uh, of the barrel. Now, it looks like this barrel is going to have to have an inside opening, a sleeve of this axis going into it, into in, it's uh, the, the axle for the barrel, so that it can have a ball bearing as well. Um, so it looks like, though, I'll have to change the connection of this uh, outer barrel to have a circular ball bearing arrangement at this end, just like it has at this end, so that that way I can bring this axle all the way over, and it'll be a, a, a uh, conventional axle ball bearing at this end, as well as at uh, this end. And this is, would be for the smaller discs that are counter-rotating, that are um, inside the barrel. Um, so I gotta work on this diagram a little bit. This is just my first draft. 
but I thought I'd record it <laughs> to show the evolution of my thinking. I still have to improve efficiency of this geometry a little bit. I'll try different configurations and look at them and see, you know, what intuitively looks better than the other, um, or logistically. I'm still not sure what I'm going to end up with, though. But I definitely want to take advantage of the idea that I want stacked plates all throughout this thing, not just two counter-rotating discs in the center, but all throughout to maximize gain in the, of this system. Of course, I have no reciprocation going on whatsoever, which kind of undermines William Lyne's story, because I'm trying to be faithful to his story, but that's one point I've s significantly altered, and that might... Um, be wrong on my part, except I'm trying to go with the logic of unipolar or homopolar generators or motors. They spin. They don't reciprocate. And I guess it's my lack of imagination or background to be able to come up, come up with a reciprocating system that's convincing based on experience that's already known in the field. Because I've never seen a reciprocating uh, Faraday situation or, you know, unipolar or homopolar situations. So, I'm not quite sure how that would work. They all uh, spin. So, I don't know. I don't know what what reciprocates. Um, it may vibrate violently because of the turbulence involved, and that might be, it might be enough to create vibration, um, and maybe that vibration is significant because it would be equivalent to a disruptive discharge, a spark, a spark gap, without actually having to have one, it, it, a mechanical disru disruption. Yet it's not strictly mechanical because it's the discs and the barrel and the axle vibrating, which is the source of the electrostatic charge, along with well, significantly the, the, the source of electrostatic charge, along with the air, the turbulent air, also is a source of electrostatic charge. And I'm not sure which is greater than the other, so I better not say. That would be a speculation on my part. But there's turbulence of the air already, and there's turbulence of the disks because they're in close proximity to each other and they're counter-rotating. So there's probably going to be a disruptive... Uh, shaking going on here. Um, so to me that was the vestigial remainder of reciprocating uh, vibration that's the only thing left remaining uh, closely akin to William Lyne's story of a reciprocating piston reciprocating a sixteenth of an inch or less. Because um, that's the best I can do. So it's mild allusion to uh, that element of his story, but it's not directly rel uh, directly parallel, but it's mildly parallel. It's the best I can do.